what's your biggest recommendation? These guys are head, like 16, 17 years old. They're heading into the recruiting year. NCA just came out where like 15s and 16s, they're going to be a little bit more on the back burner when it comes to recruiting. And 17U, it's putting a lot more pressure on that 17U summer um, than anything else because then college coaches are in contact with you and everything like that. Um, what's your biggest recommendation to a guy that is or a girl that's going into their big recruiting year um, and how how should they approach it? Eliminate eliminate the noise to yourself. It's so simple to say it's a lot harder to do, but eliminate the noise. What is the noise? Social media. That's a noise, right? All the PGs, PBRs. Yeah, it's, it means something. It's cool to see it, but in the, at the end of the day, it doesn't really mean much, right? And so that's noise. Videos of other people feeling like you're behind because that 13U kid is killing it and is getting national recognition on TikTok and I'm not, right? Those things really go into that of our ass, as crazy as it is. They're high school students, they're youth students, and they're, they're dealing with these things. And they look at this all day long. And so eliminating that noise helps me play with more of a clear mind to go out and pursue my goals. And then I love running race, man. It's like, I've got my journey. You've got your journey. Your journey is going to be different than mine. You might get signed in August <laughs> before you go to college. You might get signed as now as a junior, right when the the day hits that you can sign. Right? I don't know when it is. We don't know that. None of us can tell that. Uh, but be yourself and embrace the opportunities. And the last thing, you never know who is watching. Oh my goodness. It's, it's incredible. But there's so many good stories. I won't bore everyone with all these more stories. But um, the, the coolest point I think I've ever heard was there's a bullpen catcher. And the guy went in and his coach was watching. It was in the Northeast. And it was at Niagara, University of Niagara, I believe is what the, the name was. And so the, the bullpen catcher is catching the bullpen in between innings to help the other guy who just hit and was getting his gear on. And after he finishes up his three or four, gives the ball to the catcher, this dude books it dead sprint to the bullpen. Cool. Next inning, he books it from the bullpen down into catch. After that, he books it back. I mean, it's like it's not excessive and being like, okay, that's too much, dude. But it's like a, it's a good sprint, right? I mean, he's he's locked in, mentally focused. He's up there. He gets a couple opportunities to get some hits. Next thing you know, he gets he gets walk on opportunity at a Division One to be a bullpen catcher to start. Earns an opportunity to play eventually for the next couple of years. Never goes and plays pro ball, but guess what? This dude got four years of college at a, a mid major D one due to his hustle because you never know who's watching in the stands and who likes your style. For all the athletes out there, you guys play in so many competitive tur tournaments, both male and female, and you are all over the place, right? And so um, the more that we try to be somebody that we're not, the worse we're going to be ourselves. And so we got to be ourselves first and foremost. And then secondly, hey, if they're there to watch that picture, that might be my opportunity. If they're street clothes and nobody knows who that person is, but it's really a, a pretty powerful coach or whatever it might be, like they're watching, right? People are watching all the time. And so um, for the athletes out there, man, just be yourself, play your game, and have fun. Right. Truth is a good opportunity, not obligation that I have to go to these things. Like you get to go to these big tournaments, and all these national showcase things and playing in your program. I know they do. That's a blessing. Like you're lucky to do that. Right. Treat yeah. it as a blessing and as a great opportunity. First, oh, I have to be here. It sucks. What if I don't get seen? Um, that's actually a really good point on like social media and the noise. Yeah. Would, would you recommend like deleting it off their phone for the season? I mean, I hate to say it because well, like I'm I'm big on like recruiting purposes, like posting your videos on there and everything like that. But you could totally do that on the desktop, like just eliminate the complete noise out of the whole season, so you don't have to see see that crap. And then post when you need to post, post and ghost, and just well, just let it go. Honestly, honestly, I was going to ask you because I I'm stealing that phrase, eliminate the noise and be yourself from you. Just so you know, so I'm going to steal that. Bro, and, <laughs> oh, that's, that's copyright, Dave. You, you, owe, you owe my five bucks every time you say it. But <laughs> while you were saying that, I envisioned myself saying that to a young man who's immersed himself in social media. Who's they're all about it, right? And they're always listening to so many wrong voices and so many wrong things. And I started thinking to myself, okay, I say that to that young man or woman, and they're going to look at me and be like, yeah, but how? So what? What would you give like from a practical standpoint? Like, how would you tell them to pivot from that? So good. Those are spot on. So the the deleting it, if that works for you, that's great. Now, how many of our, our young 14, 18 year old student athletes are going to delete Snapchat and TikTok? Ah, that's tough. But what some of them do is, is so the first step really is like audit your time, right? And so an exercise we'll do, we did with the football team right before COVID, well, during COVID and 100 athletes and like, hey, check your your screen time. Everybody's going to check it, right? Mine's still pretty high because I, I, I work on it. I, I do too much mindless scrolling too, right? But mine's like four or five hours a day. 
for these kids, the average was over six hours a day. These were students who were in school, by the way, on Zoom for four, six to six hours. And one kid had 10 and a half hours. And he said, his reason, my girlfriend loves to FaceTime. I'm like, dude, you need to get a new girlfriend or stop FaceTime. And I don't know. Uh, but all jokes aside, it's like we can set time limits on our apps. So maybe you set five minutes on your Twitter a day and you got five minutes to go on. You can do all your five minutes scrolling, 10 minutes scrolling. Great. But once it hits that, it's not going to it's going to lock you out. And maybe your mom or dad has the password or your coach, if you trust the coach or sibling. Um, and so that's been beneficial for a couple of our guys. And we had a dude. He's really good on the mound, got hurt, but um, unfortunately, but he's going to a good school. He's going to be probably get drafted this year. And he puts a 10 minute time limit on all his apps. And he says, sometimes it sucks because I want to get back on Instagram at 1230 at night. But guess what? Now I can't. So what do I do? I got to do something else or I got to read or I got to do homework or maybe I just go to bed and I just get to sleep and I don't scroll after for this long and then compare myself to all the other arms in the country. And so uh, I don't know. I think just setting barriers. Right. And it comes from a good conversation with either your coaches or your parents or both. Right. I think parents can can help with that. And, and it, it shouldn't be like a destructive thing like, hey, you're spending too much time stop this like hey let's be pressed about this proactive let's take let's go 10 minutes a day and start on your snapchat you got 60 minutes a day to spend on your apps total whatever apps you have cool once the time it hits and you might even recognize really quickly how little you really care about those things and then the other piece is i know it's hard because you don't like your parent to post for you all the time but um maybe you just if it's if it's an issue for you then maybe we make some adjustments because you need to be posting i, I really believe that like so many athletes get seen via just a twitter scroll and and, and retweet which is really cool it's amazing so maybe you just have your parents posted out there or somebody else posted out there for you on your account versus you getting on there if it's a really big issue for you. But I just know that it just defeats so many people's confidence. Um, I hear it all the time working with these guys and girls. And I'm like, I guess I'd feel the same way, too, if I lived in this age at your age, because I feel this way in my own right my field, right? Let alone what you guys are doing. And it's even more magnified because you haven't gotten to any of your goals or dreams yet. So. Um, yeah, yeah, just putting barriers and right? being smart about it um, and understanding yourself. Right? Having some good self-awareness, set a limit. Hey, first 30 minutes of the day, no phone. Last 30 minutes of the day, no phone. Cool. Simple, actionable step, but it changes a lot. That little thing makes it become a big thing for your life. I always go back and forth and like, man, I wish I was playing during this time because I could brand the crap out of myself. <laughs> but then I also, but then I also am thinking like, man, I absolutely hate scrolling because I know exactly what they're dealing with because that would suck. <laughs> You're spot on. Dude. It's it's a double edged sword, man. Like I feel bad for the person that doesn't know how to brand themselves and like they're they're more introverted i'm more extroverted in general because like if you're introvert and you have the apps and you're a good baseball player and then you're scrolling and you're seeing like the 13 year old that's getting all the love you're just gonna get so mad that's gonna put you in this dark hole but like if you're an extrovert and you know how to brand yourself this is like prime time like this is for you <laughs> let's go right you are cashing in and, and and no better time to do it i mean take advantage why not Oh, I know. Like, especially with these NIL deals it's and like, even, even high school guys, <laughs> high school guys are now start. I think Missouri is one of the few states that now um, high school guys can get NIL deals. Well, it's, it's basically like, if you sign as a senior, the minute you sign, that school can start to pay you. Yeah. Like I yeah. I would start working on my, my Twitter game yeah. and working on my TikTok game and just being like those twins from Fresno uh, state. <laughs> And just like dancing and doing something like crazy and still do it, still doing, still doing my job, job, still yep. working, still getting my skill set up and still playing, still having fun. But man, you could, you could really cash in if you, if you know how to brand yourself.